You know, sometimes the best way to run a country is to let a four-year-old girl be the prime minister as the attorney general reads the national creed while wrapped up in purple linen. That's Bandia Terra. It's time to learn geography. Now! Hey everybody, I'm your host, Paul Barbato. Today, we're going to cover the only Danish-speaking country in the Indian Ocean. But first, you know the drill, let's dissect the flag. The flag of Bandia Terra is one of the only two sovereign nation flags in the world that has the color purple on it, the other being Dominica with its cute little Cicero bird. The flag has two purple circles on the right side to indicate the two main islands on the country, Bandia and Terra. The purple color represents the fields of the iconic tropical lavender that the island is rich in, and the blue field represents the Indian Ocean that surrounds the islands. On the hoist side, on the left, we have the word Bandia written in the tribal Bandia script, one of the only indigenous African scripts to have survived and is still in use today. But we're nowhere near Africa for this country. Let's find out where it is in... Bandia Terra's location is actually pretty cool. It's located in the central Indian Ocean, just southeast of the British Indian Ocean Territory Islands, and halfway between them and the Australian Cocos, or Keelings Islands. The country is made up of 11 islands, only five of which are inhabited, two of which maintain global affairs and modern societies, the largest islands, Bandia and Terra, slightly larger than the size of Puerto Rico, with three smaller incorporated autonomous island territories. The first island of these three is Viaya. The second one, a little northeast, is Terraya. And finally, we reach the smallest one, Tavarana, with only 47 people. Yep, only under 48 living lives fit on really intense terrain. These three islands are almost completely cut off from the other islands, but still maintain sovereignty agreements so that Bandia Terra can kind of rule over them, but loosely, it's weird. The capital is Utneutre, located on Bandia, and is surprisingly a fast-growing city that is really starting to invest in its architectural endeavors. In the 1980s, Bandia Terra only had rudimentary buildings and residential units until offshore oil was discovered, and since then, Bandia Terra has seen its first apartment complexes and high-rise commercial buildings sprout up all over the capital. The country doesn't stop at oil, though. It's actually investing really heavily in its tourism sector and capitalizing on various sites unseen anywhere else on Earth. Sites we will discuss is in. Now, Bandia Terra's landscape is almost incomparable to anywhere else on Earth. As a volcanic archipelago, much like Hawaii, the area has fascinating isolated structures that give it almost a creepily beautiful appeal. For one, Bandia Terra is one of the only few places in the world that has black sand beaches attributed to the volcanic soil and eroded rocks. This makes up a huge tourist spot that the island banks off of for economic revenue. Now, with a growing population but limited land area, Bandia Terra has actually done something really cool and smart. They've actually utilized underwater space on their coral reefs and beaches beaches for aquatic crop production. To this day, Bandia Terra grows and harvests some of the world's finest kelp, kombu, dulse, and laver. The crops also make up a huge part of the typical Bandia Terran diet. Agriculture employs about 22% of the population. But what really sets Bandia Terra apart would have to be their enormous fields of rare Bandia Terran tropical lavender, which is the southernmost growing version of the plant species on Earth, with a richer potency than its northern cousins, used for oil extracts, nectars, and so on. Bandia Terran lavender was and still is one of the most highly prized exports of this region. In fact, the Queen of Denmark even said something about it. Queen Caroline Matilda, wife of King Christian VII of Denmark, is quoted for saying, My petunias, my daffodils, from whenceforth they shall arrive, but the pristine magnificence of a true Bandi blossom must always be pure in its origin of the South Seas. Another cool thing is that Bandia Terra is known for having some of the coolest glowworm caves in the world. These caves actually light up upon noise, and the first inhabitants of the islands upon discovery refer to these caves as the Star Caves. But who are the real stars of Bandia Terra? Let's find out in... Throughout all of human history, Bandia Terra is a true sociological gem, and the reason is because it's one of the only few African conquest nations in which Bantu peoples from the eastern side of Africa of what are now known as Tanzania and Kenya came over to the island and inhabited it. The people who left were predominantly intellectual Africans from the Bandia tribe, who had learned European-style boat construction and sailing techniques from the Portuguese just around the time of the Omani Sultanate as they were instituting the Arab slave trade. Now, in an attempt to escape the much fiercer and torturous Omanis, they embarked on a mass exodus to pretty much anywhere. They didn't quite frankly know exactly where they're going, they just didn't like the Sultanate. After months of stopping along ports in Seychelles and Maldives, they finally discovered and landed upon two main islands which they aptly named Bandia and Terra, 
the Portuguese word for land. To this day, the islanders are predominantly African in their ethnic origin. However, the majority of Bandia pilgrims were biracially mixed with Portuguese blood and were distinguishably lighter in their complexion than the other tribes, which explains why they were such outcasts from the rest of the Bantu tribes as they were seen as white man-loving people. Nonetheless, the population is about 79% Afro-Bandian, 18% white, mostly Danish, and the remaining 3% being South Indian and Bengali. But why Danish? Well, as it turns out, soon after the Bandi had discovered the islands and developed a relatively stable society for decades, the Danes bumped into the islands and were surprised to find Portuguese speaking Africans. Famous Danish explorer Jorn Jornsson was on his way to Australia when he and his crew found Bandia Terra. Afterwards, he immediately reported his findings to King Frederick VI, and over the next century, tons of Danes flocked to Bandia Terra and eventually reshaped the entire cultural dynamic to this day. In fact, Danish is actually a secondary language to these people, and they've even adopted the Danish alphabet as a secondary script in addition to the Bandian script, which is an ancient syllable re of over 80 different characters and 10 different accent marks written up and down. Some have even mistaken Bandian for Chinese or the traditional Mongol script. However, the weirdest part about Bandia Terra would have to be its parliament and its three autonomous islands. For one, the three islands are inhabited by the Sana Bandias, a sub-tribal group that has decided to live independently with a more rustic conventional lifestyle free of modern technology. They still allow Bandia Terra to kind of have sovereignty over them and do business. However, they are social security tax exempt and by all means operate in their own self-rule. You could kind of connotate the Sana Bandia people as kind of like the Amish of the country. Now, the Bandia Terra government is kind of strange in that they elect officials to rule for nine months out of the year, but then for three months, a technical monarch overrides parliament and has the final say. What's even stranger is that every year on June 31st, or Children's Day, parliament is required by law to put the youngest child of the monarch to act as prime minister, whereas the prime minister assumes the position of attorney general for the day as he or she is bound up by purple lavender dyed velvet drapes and they recite the national creed to symbolize the escape from the Arab slave trade and the prosperity of the country. Speaking of things people try to escape from... Bandia Terra is quite the unique marvel in that for many years after its discovery and development, it was virtually unknown to many outsiders. They first came in contact with Sri Lankans and developed trade partnerships with them. However, things didn't really kick off until the 19th century when the Danes came in and introduced ideas and concepts that completely revolutionized the nation. Prior to the 19th century, the country was kind of frozen in a 15th century technological era, whereas the rest of the world was going through the Industrial Revolution. Bandia Terra also gets along surprisingly well with Singapore and Australia. The two countries have been tied together for over a century with diplomatic missions and policy developments, and the Australians were also the largest aid supporters during Cyclone Nadine back in 1977. However, the best friend of the country would have to be the Danes from Denmark. The Danes were welcomed since day one, and eventually they became close partners in trade and diplomacy. Interestingly enough, the Danes were actually not that interested in colonizing Bandia Terra for themselves, but rather they saw it as a great place to invest in for a prosperous exchange. Plus, most of the Danish immigrants were Christian missionaries who built the country's first hospitals, modern-day universities, and needless to say, the Bandians quickly embraced a Danish lifestyle and culture. In conclusion, if you've made it this far into the video, you'll realize that Bandia Terra is not actually a real country, and I just made up the entire thing. HA! You fell for it! Happy April Fool's Day, suckers! <laughs> no, seriously, Bahrain is coming up next. Hey peeps, uh, this video was really fun to make. Happy April Fool's Day. Uh, just a little side note, in this video there are over a dozen secret little hidden messages, and uh, if you'd like to find them out, join my Patreon at patreon.com slash geographynow, and uh, I'll be posting them up. You have to become a patron though. So uh, yeah, thanks for all your support. Hope you have a good one.